Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. So very recently I did reach out to you guys on the end of one of my videos, on my plant haul videos, to basically let me know if there's anything I can film for you guys that isn't like full-on informational stuff. Because I know we all love that stuff, but it does take me a hell of a long time to make and, you know, to plan, to produce, to edit and everything. And I'm kind of a bit strapped for time at the minute, so I did ask you guys if there's anything else you'd like to see me do. I did suggest doing a top 10 video and that seemed to be pretty well received. So today... I have for you my top 10 favorite anthurium. Now then, I'd just like to say the list I'm going to give you today is not in any particular order because I just, I don't feel like I can pick, you know, a, an anthurium at number one, anthurium at number 10, because I like them all for very different reasons. So I didn't want to start ranking them. I just kind of want to show you the ones that, you know, I love the most. I also wanted to do an anthurium video first. Now, obviously I will probably do one of these for philodendron and maybe monstera, but I thought I would do anthurium first because I honestly don't feel like I give Anthurium generally enough press on this channel. I think that's mainly because they're a little bit harder to care for than a lot of, you know, Monsterum, a lot of Philodendron. So for some reason, I tend to stay away from them. And that, that's a little bit silly because I look after them every day, yet I don't really talk about them. So for that reason, I'm going to start off today with my top 10 favorite Anthurium. I have, I think, around about seven of them here that I can actually show you today. One is actually too big to show you, so I will just take some B-roll and put that in. I think a couple I don't actually have, but most of what's in this list I can actually show you today. This is also why I'm filming it in my shop, because it's a lot easier. So without further ado, I think I'm going to get started. What shall I show you first? Okay, we'll start off with a classic, two minutes. So the first anthurium in my top 10 is an absolute classic. As I've just mentioned, it is an easy anthurium. It's just non-offensive. It looks amazing, but it's not overly expensive. Like this is an anthurium that looks really, really bougie, but it's very affordable and it's kind of mass produced in some countries. So it's actually really easy to get hold of. And that is the anthurium clarinervium. Now this one isn't the most amazing specimen on planet earth, but you only really need one leaf for me to show you. This is the whole thing. Let me stand back a little bit just so you can see a little bit better. This is her. I actually have a ton of these in my shop. This is just one that's been sat up top. I have some absolutely massive ones uh, down in the corner over there where I'm pointing, where you cannot see. I'm pointing down there. They're really just awesome plants. They feel a bit more like suede than they do velvet. Now, I know a lot of people talk about aroids and they talk about them being velvety. I don't think that applies to every aroid. I think you can have velvet aroids and I think you can have suede aroids. So I would class this as more of a suede aroid. These lobes are actually just kissing each other. So it's a very, very adorable plant. Again, super affordable, not too difficult to find. I think you guys in the US struggle to find these a little bit more. I know in the EU, these are like super easy to get. So if you are in the EU and you're looking for one of these, I don't think you'll have too much trouble at all, personally. But yeah, super awesome, chilled out plant. So easy to care for, it's unreal. These can dry out, to be honest, a lot more than other anthurium can and recover just fine. You won't even see any cosmetic wear and tear on the plant. Really, really solid, sturdy plants. Definitely one of my favorites they always will be because they're just so easy they just don't give you any trouble so that is anthurium clarinervium so the next plant i have in my top 10 again no particular order i've chosen this one next because i feel like it is a follow-on from the previous version it's just kind of like it's similar to the previous version but it's a little bit harder to care for but it's also easy to care for <laughs> and it's just got a little bit more it packs a bit more of a punch than the first plant so if you're looking to kind of upgrade but you want to play it safe this is a really good plant to go for and that is the anthurium crystalline them. I've mentioned these before in previous videos, but when I imported these, they had leaves about half the size of this. It might have been a plant with two leaves. It came, the leaves just died back to a stump because it was winter and it just, it didn't have a good shipment. But when they grow back, you can get some absolutely sick growth. So this is a really big one. This isn't even the biggest uh, crystallinum I've had. I think I've sold larger ones than this. This is just one I happened to pick up. I can see one down there that's larger. Two seconds, I'll grab that. You know what? They're kind of the same. I would say they were the same. For some reason, I thought this one was a bit larger, but I actually think they're around about the same size. Oh my gosh. I love these plants so much. Let me put this other one down two seconds. Yeah, so the previous plant I mentioned, the Anthurium clarinervium, did feature in my top easy rare houseplants video that I did like a year ago. And then I did another one very recently and I actually featured this one in there because it's honestly easier than you may think. The leaves can just get super huge, super big, super quick, just give them decent conditions. This one here is grown in 50% humidity, which is absolutely fine. It's not always 50% in here, but 
today it is and it's absolutely fine no damage at all so really really nice plants to have if you're looking for something that packs a little bit more punch than the clarinervium but it's still good just very quickly to compare the two plants this is clarinervium this is crystallinum i'll just push the two up on the screen so you can see the kind of differences because there isn't a ton of difference don't get me wrong there's certainly difference in the texture of the plant i would say this one's a lot finer texture than this one but both very very good options the next plant I'm about to show you is in my top 10 anthurium and it is, it doesn't have to stay small of course, but you can get these from very, very small. So if you don't have a lot of space, this is quite a nice one for you. The one I have here is a bit on the plainer side. There are actually kind of two forms to this plant. One form that is kind of plain and the other form that has more of a silver crystallinum type veining on it. But the next plant in my top 10 anthurium is the Anthurium Forgetii. Now this one is quite cute. This one is the simpler version without the veining. I don't believe I I have any left with the silver veining right now in the shop but you know what it's not all about bright veins right so this anthurium here is very very cool because it doesn't really have a set of lobes on the top of the plant here it normally just has a very very round edge to the leaf so it doesn't really have much of a you know a sinus like all of the other anthurium do how they have big ears this one doesn't really have that so it's kind of special in that sense because it just stays pretty round very very beautiful minimal plant as i say sometimes if you put in more muted plants in your collection with your more statement plants your statement plants actually stand out a little bit more think of it a little bit like if you have blonde hair and you put in low lights in your hair right i know not everybody's gonna get that but if you have blonde hair and you put low lights through your hair your blonde will look blonder. It's the same thing, it's just producing a contrast. So for that reason, I quite like this. I will insert a picture right here of a forgetty eye with the more silver contrasted painting in case that's, you know, your cup of tea. If I'd had one in the shop, I would have shown you one today. I don't know if I would have picked it over this one because I kind of like the simplicity of this because I just feel like a lot of anthurium, it's all about the bright veins. So here is a really cute candidate where it's kind of not about the bright veining which I think is kind of nice and I think it's kind of refreshing. So that there is Anthurium forgetii and it's so adorable. I'll break this up a little bit and talk about one of the plants that I actually don't have with me today. I do own one at home. I just don't have any in the shop right now. And that is the Anthurium Vitarifolium. Now this is a great plant. There are a lot of really great like pendulous long belt like Anthurium out there. There really are. And some of them are probably a lot more attractive than this one. I can't lie, they are, they really are. But this anthurium is so easy to take care of, it's actually a little bit spooky. The leaves on this, honestly, they feel like belts. They feel like actual leather belts. So it's it's super tough in terms of low humidity and underwatering and everything else. It's a really, really, really easy plant to care for. It's also a lot cheaper than all of the other pendulous anthuriums. So if you really, really want like a belt-like kind of plant like that, but you're just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just not going to spend that money on one of these big bougie anthuriums that honestly, some of them take quite a lot of work. I'm just saying. If you really don't want to spend the money, then the Anthurium vitari folium is a super good plant for that. I will probably insert footage of when I got mine in my plant haul. Uh, I was super, super happy to have this and I'd wanted it for some time. I think I saw it off a Anthurium rare plant index that I did, which I'll also link below if you're interested. But it's such a really nice plant. Good growth on them as well. They don't actually take too long to grow. They're quite a quick grower. Not only that, but they do bloom about as much as a Clarinervium does. So if you're really obsessed with, you know, blooms on these things, you get some really, really pretty ones coming off Vitari Folium. I completely and utterly recommend them. Again, if you want something a little bit more bougie, if that doesn't do it for you, there is a bunch of other Anthurium that are pendulous that you can get out there but as a classic as like a staple plant that's just not gonna let you down then the anthurium vitari folium is absolutely the one to do that and that is why it resides somewhere in my top 10 favorite anthurium i'm so pleased i'm not ranking these plants because i feel like it would be way too difficult to do so so i'm actually really really pleased that i don't have to do that that's awesome <laughs> the next plant in my top 10 anthurium i don't really see very often i'm not saying it's super rare i'm actually saying i don't know whether it's rare or not i don't know how rare it is all i know is i rarely see it in collections doesn't mean to say it's rare just means i don't see it but this is and it's not the best looking specimen so disclaimer it doesn't look amazing this is the anthurium bessii and it looks a little bit like this now you're probably thinking that that's just an anthurium who cares 
it looks the same as a lot of other anthurium, right? Wrong. I don't think it does. I will show you why. Let me just grab another anthurium. Let me grab the crystallinum again because I feel like the crystallinum kind of explains what I'm about to talk about a little bit better. So if you look at a crystallinum leaf, hopefully this is going to come off camera or I look like an idiot right now. But if you look at a crystallinum leaf, it's, yeah, it's dark, it's contrasted, but you can see it's green, right? So the Bessii is actually a lot darker than other anthurium-like crystals and everything else. And I hope that's coming off on camera. I believe it is. I'm kind of just looking through the cracks of the plants. But it is a lot more darker than a lot of other you know, cool looking anthuriums. It's darker than Magnificum. I think it's darker than Regal. I'm not sure, but it's a really, really nice one. Not only that, but when the leaves actually come out on these things, they emerge the most beautiful, like purple color. And honestly, it's amazing. They actually stay the purple color for a long time before kind of hardening off to a greeny color. But honestly, when you look at this, you can kind of see the purple in it, even though it's green. I'll hold it up to the camera, but obviously this plant has softened a little bit. We have some damage here. This is actually damage off winter and the plant actually hasn't grown since, so I might change the potting medium that it's in, but it's a very cute little plant. The cool features of this plant probably aren't that obvious looking at this one, but if you actually go on Instagram and look at the hashtag for Anthurium Bessii, then you might kind of understand what I'm talking about. It's just a super, super pretty plant and the purple is to die for. So if you're a fan of, you know, colored leaves when they emerge and you're a fan of purple, I guess, then this is totally a plant to maybe look out for. As I say, I don't know how rare these are, I have no idea. All I know is I have one. I don't see anybody with them. So if you have any knowledge on, you know, what, you know, what the scoop is with them, I would love to know in the comments. So please leave a comment down below if you know anything about this. So there you have it, Anthurium bessii. So the next plant in my top 10, I actually don't own. I had one last year. I think I may have launched the rare plant shop with one of these actually, and I haven't had one since. I don't know how easy these are to get either. Just gonna be honest. You know me, if I don't know something, I'll tell you, I don't know. And I don't know how available these are. I'm hearing mixed things. I really am. I feel like there's a supply at one point. I don't know if people have lost interest, so the supply has gone down. I don't really know. But the next plant on my list is the Anthurium Ace of Spades. Now then, this is a hybrid, but I don't know who actually knows of the parentage of the hybrid. Maybe that's why it's so elusive and that's why it's hard to find because nobody's necessarily creating it. I don't really know. I haven't a clue. But what I do know is the foliage on this is just so amazing. It has really muted kind of veining, almost like an Anthurium forgetii. But the foliage on this is like dark. I know we just talked about the Anthurium bessii that has dark foliage, but this is like darker. This is almost black. And if you're a little bit more on the artsy side with your photographs, when you take pictures for Instagram, you can get this to look very black very, very quickly. It's a really nice plant. And honestly, I would love to own one because I've seen them when they get a little bit larger and they look pretty sexy to say the least. So I think I might hunt for one. I'm pretty sure I found these on my Anthurium Rare Plant Index when I was doing the research for this last year. So ever since then, I have kind of wanted one and I don't know what happened. I think I just forgot about the concept of getting one. I don't know. I've never really looked for one, but that does not stop it being one of my top 10 favorite Anthurium. So for that reason, it resides in my list. Right, we've almost covered the more rounder leaved Anthuriums, but I think now now is the time to get into the more long leaf anthuriums, if you know what I'm saying. So the first long leaf anthurium I have in my top 10 favorite anthurium is not going to surprise anybody. I think it's nearly everybody's favorite anthurium, to be quite honest. In fact, if you don't like this anthurium, I'd be kind of interested to know because I don't know if there is somebody that doesn't like these. But this is the anthurium waraquinum, also known as the queen anthurium. So if you've never seen one of these before, please feast your eyes because these are the most amazing plants. This one's got quite a fat leaf. Is it gonna focus? There you go. So if I just go down the leaf real slow, they have beautiful long suede-like leaves and a beautiful veining all the way down. Now these guys can get pretty darn big. They can get absolutely huge. Mature plants, just look honestly like something else. I've seen mature plants in person of this and it's like nothing else I've ever seen. It's probably one of the most impressive plants I've ever seen in my life when it's at large scale. I can honestly say that it is the most impressive plant. So this one might look cute and young, but they get just so beautiful. I can't even communicate to you. So I couldn't not really put it on this list. Now these plants are known for being divas. They're known for being very difficult. And honestly, that's kind of true. This here, however, you should know if you're not familiar with these plants, this is Anthurium waraquinum dark form. There is an Anthurium waraquinum regular form. 
should we say, or green form. And that is significantly lighter, more closer to, say, a crystallinum or some of the lighter coloured plants that I've shown you. I find, in my experience, that this dark form is 10 times tougher than the green form. And again, I'd be very curious to see if anybody agrees with me down below in the comments. Another cool thing, I know people say you need like 85% humidity for these, but quite honestly, this plant here, I think this was grown in about 50 to 60% humidity. They can take a hit when you bring them into your home initially, but once they've recovered, they will grow out just fine in your conditions, providing you give them, you know, some humidity. You can't give them nothing. But I do feel like they get a little bit of a hard time for being difficult. I don't think they're quite as difficult as people make out. Again, I'm saying that specifically relating to the dark form because I've only had one experience with the green form and it kind of sucked. So I can't really not recommend these. This here is the leaf it was brought in with. By the way, it was crispy at the bottom, so I cut it off and this leaf has grown in here, as I mentioned before. So you can get great growth. Yes, they might, you know, throw a little bit of a tantrum for you, but honestly, try them. Consider giving them a go because I know they seem to be divas and they can be, but they're not as bad as people say. They really, really aren't. Let's put her down. In fact, I'm not going to put her down on the floor. I'm going to put her back where she lives because she's so cute. So my next plant is a relative of Anthurium waraquinum. It looks almost as gorgeous, so it's not like 100% as sickening as the Queen Anthurium, but it's up there. And I feel like if you're just too frightened to give the Queen Anthurium a go, but you want something very similar, then this might be the plan for you. And that is the Anthurium waterburyanum crossed with Anthurium waraquinum. And it is a very, very pretty one. This leaf is actually still in the process of hardening off. As you can probably see here how floppy it is. I don't know if it's going to get much bigger. I think this might be about done now. Who knows? I don't know. Could get a little bit bigger over the next couple of days. We'll have to wait and see. But this is a really, really nice plant. This is actually a very big plant, by the way. If I actually step back, as long as I don't knock anything over, you can see there just how big that is. It's not a small plant. I have a few of these in. I think I have about maybe six? Six? Six or so of these. Really, 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 really pretty. They're not ready yet, by the way. <laughs> Before anyone messages my shop, they're not ready. They're getting there, but they're not ready yet. Obviously, the veining is not as bright as the warwick. Let me just show you the warwick again, actually. Probably shouldn't have put it back in a wet pot, but never mind. This is the warwick here. There, you can see where the hybrid comes from in terms of the Queen Anthurium, anyway. Really, really similar, but they are tougher. And that is because, though these aren't quite as tough, the Waterburyanum Anthurium is much tougher, which is why you get a slightly, slightly, slightly tougher plant. I've noticed a big difference in porting these compared to, obviously, importing the Queen Anthuriums. So for me, they get a big thumbs up. I don't think many people have these yet. I don't think they're necessarily a thing yet, but I want to let you know that they're a pretty viable option. Likewise, if you have the Queen Anthurium and you're just obsessed with it and you think, oh my god, I need everything that looks like that, then this is kind of it, really, right? Get a hybrid. I completely and utterly recommend them. Absolutely beautiful plants. So we have this leaf here on this plant, just for anyone curious, that's a new leaf. And one of the original leaves would be this one right here. And then the other original leaf that's a larger, it's taken a little bit of a punch on import, but not as bad as a queen, right? So there it is. A lovely, lovely hybrid to either add to your collection or to substitute a queen anthurium for. And that is the Anthurium waraquinum crossed with Anthurium waterburyanum. Really, really nice plants. Oh. So we have two plants left on the list and this next plant, the second to last plant, is not going to be a shock to anybody because it kind of goes with the rest. You probably already know what I might be about to say, but the next plant in my top 10 Anthurium has to be, has to be, the Anthurium vicii. Now then, before I show you this specimen up close, I will tell you that these things are pretty damn hard. They're not tough as nails, but my gosh, they're close for an Anthurium. They're one of the toughest Anthurium, apart from the Clarinervium, that I think you can get. Now, these are really, really cool. They're not suede, they're not matte, they're not velvety, they're not whatever you want to call them. It's a very, very glossy leaf. This here is Anthurium vicii narrow form, because, oh my gosh, here you are. Here's an extra narrow leaf right there. But if I just cover my face, thank you, please. You will see how incredible that actually is. And to top it all off, since I imported these plants in, I'm now starting to get growth, which is absolutely amazing. So here is the growth on the Anthurium. Coming in super small, super, super cute. Look at that. It's so small. But that's going to get lovely and big and long, just like one of these. It looks like that one's going to be quite nice and narrow, actually. Really, really nice 
plants. They're not the easiest plants to get hold of. I would say they're a little bit more on the tougher end, but no more difficult than a queen anthurium is to get a hold of, right? So they are there, they're just not, you know, everywhere. These, when they get mature, just look absolutely sickening. Honestly, it's the best thing you've ever seen in your life. As long as you like this kind of ab vibe that's going on, then you'll love these. They, they just get better with age. Really, really beautiful plants, really tough. This is anthurium vichii. So the last plant in my top 10, I don't think I can pick it up and show you. I'll be honest, that's probably because it's maybe, oh, I don't know. You wouldn't have seen this on the hall, by the way, I had to move it. But I believe it is around about a meter tall and it has a new leaf unfurling at the moment and the leaf is probably about this. Something like that and the leaf is still very much burgundy, which means it's going to get even bigger. It's very, very exciting, but as it's too big to pick up, I will just place some B-roll over me talking so you can see the plant in question. And that is the last plant on my top 10 anthurium. That is the anthurium regal or regal regal. I'm pretty sure you pronounce it regal. This plant is really, really nice. It does have the suede-like texture and it does have bright veining, but the bright veining isn't the same as a crystallinum type bright veining where it, you know, shimmers silver. It's not the same. It is a muted veining, a little bit more like a magnificum, which I actually think I've got here. It's going to drip like no tomorrow, but here is Anthurium magnificum. Obviously, this is just a baby, but you'll see what I'm saying. It's similar to this in the fact that it has, you know, green leaf, it has veining, but it's just not a silvery bright veining. For that reason, I feel like a lot of people don't actually pick the Magnificum over a lot of other plants, probably because of that. Still a very nice plant, by the way. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the Regal. So the Regal is really, really quite something else. It has really, really nice dark foliage. The leaves come out nice, big and burgundy. You can actually find, and I want to say this, I'm going to put this out there, you can actually find very big specimens of Anthurium Regal. You may have seen people on Instagram with them. I'm talking basically the size of the one I'm showing you. Leaves, like, no problem, like half of my torso. They're not impossible to find. Will they cost you some cash? Yes, of course they will. But they are possible to find if you want to start pretty large. It is one of my favorite Anthurium, and honestly, it's going to sound cliche as hell, but they do kind of feel a bit regal when you look at them. The same way that a Queen Anthurium is regal, I do believe that the Regal looks the same, because not every bright veined Anthurium to me has presence, I would say. I like to call it presence. Not every big veined Anthurium has that, but I do feel that the Regal has that. They aren't the easiest, in my opinion. They are more difficult than a lot of other Anthurium, and they're not the quickest growers in the world. That's just what I'm finding. It could be different for other people in other climates, but I find them a little bit difficult to grow here. That does not stop them being one of my favorite Anthurium, though, just purely for the veining and just the grandeur of the whole plant. So that brings me to the end of my top 10 favorite Anthurium. Now, I know I'm probably already going to get requests to do Philodendron and Monstera. I reckon I can do that. I think I could do that for Monstera because there aren't a ton of Monstera out there, so I'll have to get creative. Philodendron, though, I literally, I think that would take me a long time to nail down my top 10 because I have so many favorite Philodendron, it's not even funny. But if you would like to see a video on my top 10 favorite Philodendron, and I will, of course, explain why they're my favorites, do I find them easy, difficult, all the rest, just so you can get a little bit of extra info, then please let me know in the comments. Though it's obviously not a straight up informational video, I like to give as much information as I know about growing them as, as I know about keeping them, because as you may know, obviously I have a shop there. I'm stood next to easily a thousand, maybe, maybe 1.2k plants right now. There's a lot in here. I can barely move. So I do have a reasonable amount of experience in growing these. So I will, of course, try and give you any information that I have whilst talking about these plants. So if you want to see any of that, please leave a comment down below. What I would like to know, though, is what are your 10 favorite Anthurium? Because I really want to see, A, how it compares to mine, and B, I want to see what Anthurium you guys really covered over the others. Because obviously there's loads to choose from, right? We all have different tastes. So I'm really, really, really intrigued to see what you guys come up with. I love reading stuff like that. So please let me know in the comments what you think. I do believe that is it. Uh, I hope you like my backdrop in here for today. I don't know if you can tell, but she's actually moved compared to where she was. She was a little bit more sprawled out, but she's now trying to lean towards the window a little bit more. So she's actually changed her position. So I've actually had to move around the room with her to get in front of her. Uh, she also has a new leaf, which you will not be able to see in this video, but she has a new leaf coming in behind here. Uh, I don't think you're going to get to see that. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But there's a new leaf coming, and I'm pretty sure she's going to explode soon. So that's kind of awesome. Can't wait for that. So yeah, 
I think that concludes this video. Please leave any comments that you'd like down below. And likewise, please feel free to leave suggestions for future videos down below. There are things coming. I do have a Red Planet Index on its way. That's maybe gonna be a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, just because it takes a lot to film, a lot to plan and all the rest. But it is coming, don't worry. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much for your time today, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.